Well, this new step forward is based on research from uh, f results of research from Ghana, Kenya, and Malawi, which tracked more than 800,000 children who have received the vaccine since 2019. But it does still face challenges. That's because Mosquerix is only about 30% effective, with protection fading after several months. Well, for more, we'll turn now to our foreign affairs editor, Philip Turrell. Philip, this is an announcement that many thought would, would never come. Uh, what can you tell us about this new vaccine? Well, Erin, this is really a major breakthrough and a major step forward for science and vaccines in the world. Malaria has been being investigated for over 100 years. There have been multiple attempts to try to reach some kind or work out some kind of vaccine treatment that would be efficient. So the, the World Health Organization has finally given the green light for this vaccination to be administered to people around the world. This is really one of medicine's greatest achievements. I can't underline it enough. This is something that people have been waiting for for decades, and it's going to uh, improve the lives of tens of thousands of people, specifically in sub-Saharan Africa, but more especially children. Now, a look a bit closer at the information concerning this vaccine. It's uh, called, its code name is RTS, comma, S. You said the name, that's Moscurix. Now, Moscurix, this vaccine um, was devised after taking elements from the Kile tree, which is found in Chile. And that has enabled researchers to understand that uh, it is efficient against the most virulent form of malaria, which is the Plasmodium falciparum uh, pathogen. There are five in all, and that is the one that causes the most deaths. So once it's administered, there are four doses which are needed, which can be given at five, six and seven months old and a final booster needed at 18 months. Now, there has been a delay in this because it's been being investigated for six months or six years rather. And uh, the researchers were fearing that this uh, very complicated administering system would not be possible. But they say that the results have proved positive and therefore they've given the green light for uh, this vaccine to go ahead. But uh, we have to remain cautious. It's only uh, effective 30% for the most deadly types of malaria, but 40% overall to stop signs of malaria from appearing. Now, that doesn't appear much, but if you consider that for 100 years or so they've been looking for a vaccine, this is a major step forward because it means that slowly uh, a full vaccine is, is on the way, uh, and this is really a major step forward towards that. But the fact, Philip, that it took so long to find a, va a vaccine is perhaps a reflection of the complexity of this virus. Why is malaria so hard to treat? Well, if you look at malaria around the world, uh, the facts speak for themselves. Uh, as I was saying, there are five different malaria pathogens, 229 million cases worldwide an annually, 409,000 deaths every year. 94% of those cases are in sub-Saharan Africa. That's according to the World Health Organization World Malaria Report for 2019. So it is a very serious problem. So why is it so difficult to treat? Well, many people have been saying, well, we found a vaccine for COVID in just a year. Why has it taken 100 years to find a vaccine for malaria? The reason for that is the two are completely different. COVID is a fairly simple virus to treat compared to a very difficult uh, parasite, which is uh, malaria, which changes forms all the time, has uh, evolved to avoid detection by the human immune uh, deficiency uh, system. Uh, it can uh, change several times b between the, the, the bite of the mosquito and the time that it enters the red blood cells or the liver cells where it causes the most damage. Uh, this new drug can attack that uh, parasite before it gets to the red blood cells or to the liver cells after it enters the body via the mosquito. So that's why it's so important at the time being. So this is a major step forward. Uh, and I think it's opening the doors to a lot more research into vaccines. And the good news is that there is another vaccine which is in the pipeline, which is currently being investigated after trials in Burkina Faso. Uh, and that is from a, a study in Oxford in the United Kingdom, uh, which uh, is coming up with information which says it could be 77% efficient, uh, which is even more uh, than this current vaccine, which has been given the green light by the World Health Organization. All right, Philip, we'll have to keep it there for now. But thank you very much for that detailed analysis of this new major development. Philip Turrell.